Of course, you go there mainly to accomplish uh, the mission objective, uh, as mentioned before. And in fact, I would say that the satisfaction you got from a, from a space flight, from a shuttle flight, which is a relatively short flight, about 10 days, uh, with a clear, as, as I mentioned before, clear but hard to reach objective. The main satisfaction was really to reach the goal of the mission. But of course, there are a lot of uh, side aspects of the mission which are wonderful. And seeing the Earth is, is definitely one of them. And whenever we had a little bit of free time, of course, we had uh, our head on the window. The shuttle had uh, two very large overhead windows in the aft cockpits, pretty large, large window, about 60 by 60 centimeters, very good optical quality. Sometimes these windows, depending on who are doing, were oriented to the sky. And uh, the sky is basically black during the day, but of course it's full of star during the night. I say black during the day, because as long as you have the sun somewhere, above the horizon, your eyes are in the day mode if they don't have the sensitivity to see the stars. Uh, but if the overhead windows were down to the Earth, of course, we had a magnificent view of the Earth, whether it was during the day or during the night. And whenever we had some free time, we're at the window to look at stars or to look at the, at the Earth. And, you know, you go around the Earth in an hour and a half. So you have 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets during one terrestrial day of 24 hours. So if you like sunrises and sunsets, uh, you have to go into space. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, the Apollo program was uh, from the early 60s. Uh, the first landing was in 69 until 1972. And uh, of course, we went to the moon six times, uh, landed on the moon. Each time we had two people who walked on the moon. Uh, so that, that was, of course, a uh, a wonderful program and uh, it demonstrated uh, a, a huge capability in the U.S. as a response to the first successes of the Soviet in space. You know, the, the U.S. had to respond uh, and they responded through the Apollo program, which was magnificent. But since uh, the end of the Apollo program, Apollo 17 was in December 72, we uh, went in space many times, but on low Earth orbit. You have the Earth like this and it's very close to the surface of the Earth, between 300 and 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And um, uh, we have, I mean, it was very useful to do that because what we did on the space shuttle, you know, we had the Hubble Space Telescope, which we deployed and uh, did repair work uh, in the space environment um, on five occasions. And that was a, and still is a, a wonderful program. We assembled the International Space Station the International Space Station was used since 2011 until now successfully to do science in the um, in the low Earth orbit, mainly in the in the zero gravity environment. Uh, but this is all close to the Earth, and uh, the idea is now to go back to faraway destinations. First, the Moon, that's the so-called Artemis program. Uh, it was launched by the U.S., but there will be participation of Europe, Canada, and Japan. Um, so, Moon by 2025 for the first landing of the South Pole of the Moon, and then establishment of the Moon base in that same location, the South Pole of the Moon, by about 2028 or 29. So, um, you know, that's the near term future of human spaceflight. Of course, with the robots, we go to Mars and to other destinations, the solar system, since a long time. By the way, you know that. Uh, there's a Mars probe from uh, uh, the Emirates that uh, came on orbit around Mars uh, about four days ago. And two days ago, there was a, a Chinese spacecraft that came on orbit around Mars. And on the 18th of February next week, there will be a US spacecraft Perseverance that will land on the surface of Mars. So we do a lot of exploration of the solar system with uh, robots and uh, probes, but human beings have never been beyond the moon and uh, has not gone to the moon for the last few decades since the end of the Apollo program. We'll go back there in a few years from now. And uh, the goal is eventually to go to Mars, a human space flight to Mars, maybe in the 30s, in uh, 10 to 15 years from now, we should be able to go to Mars. So this is the future of human space flight. We'll continue going to low Earth orbit because it's very useful, but we'll go to faraway destinations, moon and Mars. I had I had a, I had a, one very precious notebook where I had a lot of information that was uh, 
accumulated during the training and I could, took a lot of notes and uh, uh, in this notebook there were always pictures and drawing pictures of my family and drawings from uh, my daughters that were given to me shortly before I left uh, no I always had home comforts but you see our missions were short uh, typically 10 days and um, if you don't see your family for 10 days but we had possibility of contact with them during the mission it's okay uh, for the ones who stay for six months in space or the one who will go to Mars for two and a half years that that's going to be much more important for us I had some and it was very precious and it was not so much because of the duration of the time but it was uh, you know the the pressure that you had during the mission uh, because uh, going in space is living under wonderful conditions again I mentioned the beauty of the earth and so but it still is life under pressure for a few days yeah, no doubt about that yeah I had some home comforts and uh, my family has already been very 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 dear to me and uh, it was good to have these pictures and drawings from my daughters yeah.